Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. This is going to be my final book haul of 2022. Now, I know that there will probably be a few things missing as I'm filming this before Christmas. Obviously, I'm uploading it before Christmas, so I might get some books for Christmas, but if I do, those will just be included in my next book haul. But these are basically everything I hauled from September through December, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 books, and as you can see, it's about shoulder level and I'm sitting on the floor so yeah so I also have a time crunch because I'm on I'm doing sprints with my friends and I have 24 minutes to film this so this is gonna be really rapid fire and I'll try to say where I got these if I remember these are also in the order that I got them so the first book is my pre-order of the Sunbearer Trials by Aiden Thomas uh, came in this came out in September so it arrived in September and this basically like um, Hunger Games meets Percy Jackson but kind of like Mexican-ish inspired um, mythology. It is very queer. I love this. I've already read it. Um, so yeah, and I love the little skull underneath. Um, but yeah, I love this. Um, so yeah, that's book one. And then we have the um, Waterstone signed exclusive edition of Wolf Song. So the new like cover that is published with, is it Tor? Yeah, Tor, the beautiful sprayed edges. And then it is signed by TJ Klune, worth every penny. Um, and I'm so thankful that my mom also put money to go towards this, like she paid for part of it, so. I love this I this basically the easiest way to describe is gay werewolves like found family um, I love I love this series and as they come out in hardcover I'm going to be buying them definitely one of the prettiest like books that I own like just because just gorgeous then we have Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco this is the third book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series Kingdom of the Wicked basically you follow um, a girl whose twin sister dies. Uh, she tries to figure out what happened and accidentally summons one of the seven princes of hell. Um, it's kind of like the first book's why the second two books are new adult. I didn't enjoy this as much as the first two, but yeah, I read this. Then we have the collector's edition of Red, White, and Royal Blue, which has the blue kind of cover um, and then like pretty end pages that are just character art. Um, this is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, you basically, it's the son of the President of the United States and the grandson of the Queen of England. And the two of them, fake friendship turned to real friendship, um, friendship turned to romance, and yeah, I love this so much. I'm actually literally probably going to be starting a reread of this series, about, of this book, probably honestly after filming this because I, I want to reread it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, obviously Waterstones, and then both of these are Indigo. Same with this, forgot to mention that. Uh, then we have It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover, which is the sequel to It Ends With Us, um, like contemporary adult romance, um, kind of like Second Chance, uh, dealing with trauma and the aftermath of trauma, and I got this at Indigo. I've tabbed it. I love this. I have an entire reading vlog for It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. Yeah, love this. Um, I don't like how it's, how it's shiny, um, but yeah, I yeah this is what it's kind of like I am not in the mood to film but I wanted to film this these next five books are from my library's book sale so I honestly don't know much about them um so I probably will just skim the back of the book and kind of explain them but uh when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole this is a thriller um Sydney Green is Brooklyn born and raised but her beloved neighborhood seems to change Every time she blinks, condos are sprouting up like weeds, for sale signs are popping up overnight, and the neighbors 
she's known all her life for disappearing. To hold her, to hold on to her community's past and present, Sydney channels her frustrations into a walking tour and finds an unlikely and unwanted assistant in one of the new arrivals on the block, her neighbor Theo. Um, yada yada. When does coincidence become conspiracy? When? Where do people go when gentr gentrification? I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, pushes them out. Can Sydney and Theo trust each other or themselves long enough before? Long enough to find out before they disappear too. Sounds really good. Um, I know that my friend Reese bought this and then I saw it and I was like, ooh, he bought it. So maybe Buddy Read and it cost me literally a dollar. Um, then we have The Sound of Stars by Alicia, Alicia Dow. Um, this is an art copy, um, but my library sold it. It was only a dollar. I know you shouldn't buy art, but my brain goes, it's a dollar and the money goes back to my local library so i don't feel as guilty um so can the girl with the forbidden library and all the aliens who love pop music work together to save the world two years ago a misunderstanding between the leaders of earth and the invading Elori resulted in the death of one third of the world's population today 17 year old ellie baker survives in an Elori controlled center in new york city all art, books, and creative expressions are illegal, but Ali breaks the rules by keeping a secret library. When when young Elori Commander Morris finds Ali's illegal library, he's duty bound to deliver her for execution. But but Morris isn't a typical Elori, and Ali and her books might be the key to a desperate rebellion of his own. So, yeah, I've heard amazing things of the about this, so I need to read it. Uh, then we have a lot, so I think that's how it's pronounced by uh, Darcy Little Badger, and um, this um, this all I know is like a Native American kind of story. Uh, but uh, imagine an America very similar to our own. It's got homework, best friends, and pistachio ice cream. There are there are there are some differences. This America has been shaped dramatically by the magic monsters knowledge and le legends of its people those indigenous and those not some of these forces are charmingly charmingly everyday like the ability to make an orb of light appear or travel across the world through rings of, of fungi but other forces are less charming and should never see the light of day a lot so lives in the slightly stranger america she can raise the ghosts of the dead animals and a skill passed down through the generations of her lipin apache family i'm pronouncing that wrong and i know that and i will do the research to figure out how to pronounce that correctly when i do read this her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes but she is going to do more than pry the picture perfect facade of willoughby mask gruesome secrets and she will rely on her wits skills and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family so yeah, it's like speculative fiction, I think, is, yeah, speculative fiction. Um, I've heard amazing things about this, so I saw it. I was like, yeah, I want to read it, so I'll buy it, and yeah. Then we have Three Truths and a Lie by Brent Hart Hartinger. I've heard nothing about this, but I was kind of just reading the thing, and it was like, sounded interesting. Deep in the forest, four friends gather for a weekend of fun. Truth one, Rob is thrilled about the weekend trip. It's the perfect time for him to break out of his shell, to be the person he really wants to be. Truth number two, Liam, Rob's boyfriend, is nothing short of perfect. He's everything Rob could have wanted. They're perfect together. Perfect. Truth three, Mia has been Liam's best friend for years, long before Rob came along. They get each other in a way Rob could never, will never understand. Truth number four, Gallen, Mia's boyfriend, is a sweet, handsome, and incredibly charming. He's a definition of a golden boy, even with the secrets up his sleeve. One of these truths is a lie, but not everyone will live to find out which it is. That, I read that and I was like, okay, but like, this is like a really short thriller. It's only like 270 pages, I think. 261. So it's very short. It'll be perfect for like if I just want to read something short and like a thriller and like it doesn't have the best ratings, but it seems like it might be a fun read. And then we have Asylum by Madeline Rowe. I don't know if that's correct. Once you get in, there's no going out. For 16 year old Dan Crawford, the New Hampshire College Prep Program 
is a chance of a light lifetime except when dan arrives he except except that when dan arrives he finds out that the usual summer housing has been closed forcing students to stay in the crumbling brookline dorm formerly a psychiatric hospital as dan and his new friend abby and jordan start exploring brookline's twisty halls and hidden basements they undiscover disturbing secrets about what what really went on here? Secrets that link Dan and his friends to the asylum's dark past. Sounds really good. So yeah, these next two are Illumicrate exclusive. So that is the Illumicrate edition of Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, gorgeous bright edges. Obviously, I've explained this before. Um, art on the M pages and like gorgeous art under the dust jacket. And then also, one last stop by Casey McQuiston gorgeous sprayed edges end page art and um under the dust jacket art like hardcover art um i'm tired apparently and can't speak this is basically how do i even describe this quickly uh we follow august and jane jane has been stuck on this train um and it's like and she's displaced from the 70s and then august tries to find a way to get Jane off the train while also falling in love with her. Yeah, that's the easiest way to describe it. I, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, second copy of this. Then we have the Heartstopper Yearbook by Alice Oseman. I bought this at Indigo. Um, and this is literally just kind of like a bonus thing to the kind of like Heartstopper um, world. It has like, talk about how the like graph like how the graphic novels came to be how the tv show like came to be kind of and just like there's just fun like bonus comics and all that i loved it it's a hard stopper of course i had to own it the next book the next book was actually sent to me by the author for review um and that is an incarnation of light and shadow by s.a christensen and this i'm gonna struggle horribly so i'm just gonna read the back so in the kingdom of Virtual, only a handful of people known as incarnate can use magic. Equally feared and respectful, they are revered as saints and indulged like gods. But the sudden death of Virgil's rulers unleashes a powerful struggle between four incarnate, each seeking power to fulfill their own desires. Gabriel, a charismatic socialite who takes darker paths to avoid slipping back into powerlessness. Zoe, the daughter of a disgraced merchant, determined to carve a new path for her life. Nicholas, an exiled prince tr trying to escape the ghost of his past, and Sil Silji, an assassin who will stop at nothing until she sees the adoration she has always been denied. In fighting and betrayal runs rampant as each becomes worse than their problems in order to solve them. I'm halfway through this. Um, I haven't, I like, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to be finishing it here probably in the next few days if I get around to actually reading it because I haven't read it in a while. Um, but yeah, like think like new adult, high fantasy. Honestly, it has some vibes of like heists and just gaining power and it's so far it's pretty good. Uh, and then we have um, a Light in the Flame by Jennifer L. Armachout. I bought this at Indigo. Actually, the rest of these were all Indigo. Um, but this basically uh, is a sequel to A Shadow in the Ember where we follow Sarah who she's like destined to kill the primal of death because of this like thing that happened years ago and um, it's like a new adult high fantasy. Um, yeah, I love this. I recently just finished this. Um, so yeah. And then we have Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass, which is the sixth book in the Throne of Glass series. And uh, Throne of Glass is like a young adult uh, fantasy where we're originally where we're following Slana Sardothian, who's an assassin and shit that she does. And this is like, and this is the sixth book in the series. I'm so excited to own this so I can finally do my tandem read of Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn. So yeah. And then the final book I got is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion, which is the second book in the Legendborn cycle. The first book is Legendborn. It's um, like a King Arthur retelling. Uh, 
you follow Brie who goes through this like um, college and discovers magic and there's whole secret society and I love Legendborn. I need to read Bloodmarked. It's been out for over a month and I haven't read it. I've had it for like three weeks now and I haven't read it but I need to reread Legendborn so like expect me to be reading this in January. So yeah and this is the Indigo exclusive edition so yeah. Ooh, I actually haven't checked that. I wanted to see if there's anything under the dust jacket but um yeah so those are the books that I've hauled recently in the last like three months um so yeah I don't really think I have anything else to say this was kind of chaotic but honestly chaotic is kind of my brand um so yeah but I really hope you enjoyed this video um let me know what's one book you've bought recently or one book you want to buy um so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.